Hey you guys, it's your girl Kristen here. I'm a licensed esthetician, an educator, mentor, a YouTuber, and a mom. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, especially if you're also an esthetician, beauty entrepreneur, content creator, or maybe you just love skincare that all works here. I've been able to share with you my real and raw journey as I've become a solo business owner, now have employees, I have two treatment rooms, and I've just been excited to continue to grow this channel with you guys. We're on our way to 40,000 amazing subscribers hopefully coming here on my channel you can get that motivation that inspiration and that's what you can expect from me here on my channel so you're gonna want to join the fam make sure you check out my resources I just launched a new online course earlier this year called the going solo series I give you 33 videos that I've recorded some actual tangible resources I've gotten some really great feedback about it already but that series is even more detailed and gives you all the tools you need to open up a successful six-figure business I do also offer one-on-one -on -one virtual coaching sessions so if you're not really ready to take that full leap yet and you just want to chat with me and discuss a few things or maybe you have a business already feel free to contact me if you are interested in having a coaching session with me so if you clicked on this video I'm sure you're excited you probably saw the thumbnail and you're like oh my gosh you put another fabric ceiling I have been waiting for this because it is such a big project my auntie you know she's very busy and so we finally found the time where the both of us were able to put aside some time we finally put together a new fabric ceiling in my new treatment room and I'm excited to share with you an updated very detailed fabric ceiling tutorial if you haven't checked out the first video that I did make sure you watch that just to kind of get a refresher on what we already shared with you but I'm gonna go ahead and and copy over in this video what supplies we use and things like that but I do plan on making this video very much a step-by-step -step tutorial for you guys and of course throughout the video if you have even more questions feel free to pop them down below hopefully we can clarify things but a lot of it is trial and error and you're gonna want to make sure that you set aside a really good amount of time probably at least one full day like I did have to block out a full day of clients and then we did go into like one more day where it was like about a half day so give yourselves an ample amount of time and if you can do this before you even move anything into the room that would probably be best because of the circumstances and because I couldn't wait for my auntie to be available I just had to make my room what it was and then we just worked around it so it's doable but but if you can do this before you even move anything into your room, that would be ideal. Grab that pen and paper and continue watching. So again, if you haven't already cleared your room, make sure you have enough space, especially along the edges of the room to work on the ceiling. Step one, measure the room so that you know how much fabric to purchase and to section out the billows evenly throughout the room. And you'll need a tape measure for this and you'll want to measure from one length of the room to the other. Step two, make proper markings. Use a pencil to mark the sections around the room in the ceiling area that you want to measure out for your billows. So if you want to have a certain amount of sections, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you measure the length of the room and then divide it by however many sections you want to create those billows. So step three, pre-cut your mason line. Measure the mason line from wall to wall and pre-cut it but obviously leave plenty of slack so that you can tie several knots we did about three knots when we tied it to the eye hook and we left extra even to be able to trim the ends because sometimes the mason line it untwists so then it gets really tricky to try to fit it through that teeny hole in the eye hook so the twisted mason line by everbuilt where did you get this home depot home depot people we're doing it length lengthwise Step four, insert eye hooks into the wall. Using a very thin drill bit, puncture a hole just to start the opening in the wall, but do not go too deep or else the eye hook will just slip out. Puncture a hole just shallow enough to get the eye hook started and then actually use your hand or maybe there's a specific tool that you can use to make sure you're twisting that eye hook as tightly as possible. So these are the eye hooks that we also used last time. And what are, what's the purpose of the eye hook, would you say? The eye hook is to anchor the twine okay. corners and in the center. Okay, so we're gonna put 
the eye hooks where we had made markings so that when we put the string across the room, it's being held in place. We got the eye hook in there as such. Okay, so we put in the eye hooks and all where we said we would. <laughs> so now we're gonna tie the string this way and it has to be really tight. Step five, place J hooks between I hooks. These J hooks are meant to support the string and the added weight from the fabrics. Where you wanna insert the J hooks are gonna be all the way across and I'll put a clip in here right now to kind of explain that a little bit better so you can see visually what I'm talking about. But depending how long your string will be will determine how many you need to place so make sure you purchase extra. Then probably once you actually place the fabric onto the strings you'll have to move those J hooks around. You need it so that it can support the string while you're placing the fabric while you're weaving it up and through because if you just leave it by itself you'll see what happens. Uh, across the other line. On, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you guys real quick what the J hooks are used for because I feel like that's what you guys wanted to know in the last video. So when I told you guys to put the J hooks along the lining, this is where they're at. Let me show you. Let me find one in here. So they're between the fabric panels and we use it right here. Let me focus on this real quick. So this is where one of the J hooks is. So see how it's supporting the string and it's like between two panels. So at first when you put them up there, they're not gonna be probably like perfectly in between. So you'll probably have to move them around, but it's just so that this is supported so that the weight of the fabric doesn't like pull the whole string down. Step six, weave fabric over the mason line. So very carefully start to weave the fabric on top of the mason line. It's not over and under, it's all literally on top of the string. We purchased the fabric from a wholesale fabric store in San Francisco. You can go to your local Michaels or Joann's, wherever they sell fabric. You're gonna need a lot of it though, depending on how big your room is. Try to find a place that is more like a wholesale place versus a chain. Uh, art or supply store, um, you can simply Google that and I'm sure you'll find something. But we picked a fabric that was not completely translucent but not super opaque either. So you want some, some light to be able to go through it but it not be super solid either so that it doesn't darken the room. Create your billows however deep or shallow that you want and then step back and look at it and make sure it looks right to you. and probably pull out your phone and see how it looks in a picture. And then adjust as needed if you want them to be more shallow or deeper, whatever aesthetic you want it to be, just fix it before you do this next step. Woo, we are making progress, finally. <laughs> so we added two more, we just, instead of one string, we did two. So now it's gonna pretty much be like the other room except the opposite direction. Step seven, cut off any excess fabric, but leave enough so that the fabric can be adjusted if needed and that you have enough fabric to tuck 
around the line where you'll be hiding the ends of the fabric. You'll be able to see in our next clips where my aunt shows you how to do that. Step eight, tuck in remaining fabric. With double-sided fabric tape, sandwich the end of the fabric together around the mason line. This holds it in place while you're flipping the fabric edges in the opposite direction. Okay, so we're back here, day two of the project. Day two. And Auntie has been trimming the edges. As you can see, it's kind of, you know, still hanging off where we cut it. But she had some insight for us. Yeah, actually what we're doing is we are flipping the inside. We're trying to create a clean edge. So you can see the difference between this edge and the edge that Kristen just showed you. Yeah. So you can see this is hanging down. What we're trying to do is flip it around so that the, the this part hanging down is actually on the inside. Uh, basically, you can see that the fabric is hanging off the line. And we are going to, I put a little bit of the double stick fabric tape just to hold it right there. And then I am going to be trimming it across. Okay, wait, so where's the tape? You can kind of see it in between here. It's just stuck, just a teeny little piece. So you kind right of sandwiched it together? Yeah, just sandwiches, okay. because I want to hold Around it the there. String. So basically, I guess what you could do too, is you could put like a, uh, what is it, like a pin yeah. or something like that. But since I've been working with the tape, we just yeah. figured this was the best thing to do. Give me if this is the weirdest angle, <laughs> but they wanted details. We're giving I them know. details. You're gonna find yourself contorted <laughs> in all different kinds of <laughs> directions. So now you can see there's a shorter, there's a shorter edge, and then what we're I'm going to be doing is slowly flipping it over, little by little, and taping it on the other side with the fabric tape. Oh. You look like a model right now with the fan blowing on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the wonders of Ooh. the fan. So see, we are going to be taking part, parts of it like this and flipping it slowly. <laughs> so we're flipping it around now. And the reason why I taped it the other way is if you don't, the whole thing just slides. Right, so you kind of hold it in place. Yes. I, I, that's how I found that found it out the hard way is that the whole thing just slid off so I have to hold it I find a way to oh, hold it down oh I get it I'm gonna let auntie do her thing well you're amazing thank you thank you so much I always think of you this. whenever I see the fabric Aww. ceiling which is every day I like that. <laughs> How special is that? And there it is, guys. I know it seems a lot more simple in this video, but it's a very big project. So again, set aside enough time. Um, have at least two, two of you doing the project, if not three people, ideally. This is not a one-person project because you need someone to help you to hold the fabric, to help weave it in, to hang up the strings, to look at it, you know, a second opinion is always helpful. Again, if you have specific questions, if I didn't address something, please comment below. Help out your viewers because I'm sure they might be thinking it as well. I do hope that this video is a bit more informative than the last video and I'm excited to see you guys put up your own fabric ceilings in your treatment rooms. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and as always, I'll see you guys back here on Monday with a new video. And until then, I love you, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!